views expressed on this program are those of the hosts, guests, and callers, and are not necessarily those of this station, its management, or other advertisers. You're listening to Transformation Talk Radio. Hi, welcome. This is Dr. John Martini. This is one of the most amazing and inspiring shows that you can listen into. If you want to be on the edge of your seats, if you want to open up your heart, if you want to expand your mind, and you want to meet incredible people, stay tuned because you're just about to experience a transformative radio show that will change your life. And you're listening to the Dr. Pat Show that's coming up right next. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. Talk radio to thrive by. Powerful, inspiring, and coming to you live, bringing you stories of people like you and me, busting through and living life full out. Get ready to dare to wonder what your life would be like if you knew you could not fail. Hey, everybody. Welcome. Welcome to the Dr. Pat Show. I'm Dr. Pat. Talk Radio to Thrive By, right here on Transformation Talk Radio and any other place that you're listening to the show. I don't even mention them anymore because I'm, I obviously I always leave something out, but I'm not going to leave out Mr. Benny today. Hello, Mr. Benny. Hey, what's up, Pat? Ah, don't worry about it. You got to move on with the show. Don't worry about little old me. Yeah, no. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We've just come off a long weekend, yep. a little fired up here. That's what happens when you give us a day off. I have to tell you what happened to me over the weekend. I did something very unusual on Saturday. What was Extremely that? unusual. Mm-hmm. I I stopped long enough to just take lay down on the couch, just you know, just lay in there checking messages, uh, and I woke up like four hours later. Whoa. That's what I'm saying. That's a major what my, power nap. What my friends say is I've been drinking this uh what is the name of that water? Kangen water. Oh, Kangen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, Kangen. yeah. That's it. I'm from New York, so oh, it's Kangen. Yeah. But Kangen water. I've been a friend of mine's been giving me this water. And I'm thinking that had to be it. Could that have been. To Could be have it. been. Cuz I'm I'm already gluten-free. Hmm. I'm already got that thing going on. I'm like very very like healthy. I I do, you know, all those things. But sleeping on a Saturday? No. <laughs> Not in my year. Yeah, you probably needed it though, too. I mean, I did. You've been working hard. I've been working hard. Oh, she works hard for the money. Yes, she does. Yes, she does. She works. <laughs> I'm sorry. My guest is like, I don't know. Did she hang up yet? We've got, we've got a great show for you guys here joining us today. I'm so excited to be talking to Mary because you know what? What do I mean by that? Mary Shutan joining me here today. And why? Because we're talking about the spiritual awakening, spiritual awakening guide. More importantly, what is spiritual awakening? And, you know, it's a bigger conversation for me. It's yes, we can talk about an awakening and we can talk about what happens when we get to realize our psychic abilities in the world. But then it's another thing to talk about what we do with that. You know, what do we do with those abilities? You know, what does clairvoyance actually mean? You know, why is it that so many of us say that we're empaths? What does that mean? Uh, We don't walk around with like a tattoo on our foreheads that says, I'm an empath, but it has certain meaning. And so when we take this journey and we walk through life, and let's just call it spiritual stuff happens to us, right? Whether it's dark, light, or anything in between. When we, have, when we have that awakening, however big or however small, something happens, we're never the same. In my case, and you guys have heard me talk about this over and over and over again, and Linda will attest to this, something happened to me in 1990. Something happened. I don't know exactly what that was that happened, but I was different. I woke up, I looked at my life, I didn't like it anymore. I went into work. I started to tell all my bosses I didn't like it anymore. And after 24 and a half years, I could not carry out an order from the company that I was supposed to downsize people in an inhumane way. Now, many folks would say in today's world, you got to put her on some medication if she starts to act like that. But I think Mary may have something else to say about it. Is it possible to have an awakening that's, eh, I'm just saying, uneventful, but yet you're not the same. And so I get to chat with her about life, 
about our own journey, about what us, our little sensitive people, we're always getting our, we're just getting our feelings hurt all the time. But what is it about us and our path and what we've come to know about life that has taken us into a world that is really unrecognizable to many people that have known us before? So today we get to talk about her incredible guide, the Spiritual Awakening Guide, and we're going to we're going to take your calls because you know this is a show which includes what she does so very very well beyond being being a classified as a healer she's somebody that takes a message out into the world and helps all of us connect with that inner part of us that may be a little crusted over mary it's great to have you on the show welcome to the show thank you for having me i'm excited to be here so, so let's start with the little awakening part, which I said to you that I talk about 1990, and I've said this on air, and I, I do. I say this. I think I think an alien took over my body. I, that's the only way I know how to describe it, because one day I am an executive climbing to the top of the ladder, and it didn't mean it didn't matter how many body bags I left behind, and the next day I wasn't. And it seems odd to be talking about it, but I'm, I, I want to hear from you about spiritual awakenings and are there a range of them? Can it be like a nuance, like a drop of water, or does it always have to be a lightning bolt? You know, it really doesn't have to be a lightning bolt. We, In our culture, we kind of put all of this hyper-focus on these really intense spiritual awakening um, experiences, and I'm not saying that people don't have those. They definitely do, but there are all these different types of awakenings from really gradual ones to really intense ones, and some of the gradual ones kind of get lost in the mix a little bit. So I talk about how a spiritual awakening can be, you know, going out for a long bike ride and feeling kind of energy flow through your body. It can be looking up at the stars at night and realizing, you know, that there's this sense of oneness around you. It can be that shift when you wake up suddenly and you realize that your career or what you're doing isn't who you are, it isn't your truth, and that something needs to happen about that. You can't kind of live that lie anymore. So, yeah, there are, there are totally a huge variety of, of different types of, of awakenings that we can go through. I have to ask you, you know, when you were growing up as, as, as a kid, child, did you think you were different? I did. I'm yeah. asking this question only because I'm not gonna ask I this question do, because yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm writing my book now and in my book, you know, everybody has these, oh, I thought I was blah blah blah. Honestly, I really thought I was Elvis Presley when I was eight years old. Okay? I'm just saying. Now, is that different enough to be called really different? But I don't know. You know, is there a part of us that starts to channel I'm just saying and we don't even know it? But we're labeled. We're different, which means we're usually less than. What was that journey like for you? Yeah, so I've always had a sense that I was kind of really different than other people. Um, I've always thought really differently than other people, and I've always seen and kind of sensed things um, that I, I realized at a fairly young age that, that other people weren't seeing or sensing. So. Like most of the people that I talked to, I kind of learned to, to shut up about it for, for a good long period of my life. But, but yeah, so um, the harshest judge of myself I did find, uh, I found out was, in fact, myself, though, is that people, when they meet me, generally they're like, oh, there's something different about her. But um, I was the, the harshest critic of myself. Um, and meeting people who've had all of these different types of experiences, I think that we're all kind of strange in our own kind of individual individual ways. Well, and this is really kind of, you know, the conversation we're having today. I mean, I don't know about you, but I, I did feel different at a very young age. And I think that when I think about the journey that I went on, you know, I have been called by many people that knew me, growing up and whatnot, the luckiest person on the planet. I now know that I don't think it's luck. 
And so I want to ask you about spiritual awakening. Most people that come out and talk about this, this is why I said, you never thought you were going to have this conversation with me. I'm sure of it. But then again, you probably did. Here's a question I have for you. You know, some folks believe that there are so many different things that equate to an awakening. And I was really struck by what you wrote about it here in the awakening process. And yet I believe you called them 12 layers. 11's my favorite number. So I was hoping they'd be 11, but you called them 12. And I wanted to ask you this. Isn't it possible for us uh, that we have these layers of awakening and they're so subtle sometimes, we don't know it, but we start to feel different. I want to talk with you about that when we come back, because you've g- given us a step-by-step process. Thank you for that. And when we come back, I want to talk about what that process is and how any of this can lead to us becoming and being that of an intuitive nature. Let's take a short break. We'll be right back with the Dr. Pat Show. For those of you out there, we are taking your calls, 1-800-930-2819. When we come back, we're going to talk about the layers. We'll be right back. Tune in to The Truth is Funny with Colette Steffen each Wednesday at 8 a.m. Pacific, 11 a.m. Eastern on TransformationTalkRadio.com. This hit show will have you thinking outside the box and riding the wave of infinite potential. Join Colette on the Higher Self Network, inspiring listeners to shine their brilliance and ensure success while roaring with laughter as they recognize the humor of the giant cosmic joke. Visit TheTruthIsFunny.com. Transformation Talk Radio is dedicated to the education and awareness of Lyme disease. Hey, everybody. Welcome back to Lyme Talk Radio. I'm Dr. Pat, joined here by Dr. Nusheen Darvish. Dr. Pat Basili and Dr. Nusheen Darvish will be bringing the most innovative, groundbreaking information, research, treatment innovations, and stories from those it affects every day. I'm so excited to be talking about this. We have so much to share. Dr. Darvish and I are planning to do is connect the dots. People suffering with all sorts of chronic diseases, it's time. It is time for them to transform. Tune into Lyme Talk Radio and help keep our mission strong for the loyal listeners out there that have been listening to this incredible show on Lyme disease we are not going to let you down we're going to come through stronger and enrich the platform for Lyme disease awareness through Lyme Talk Radio the message will continue the conversations will become stronger and the healing epic Are you feeling broken from your relationships? Are you second-guessing yourself about friends, family, and lovers? Tune in to the hit show that's creating a buzz in the love-seeking community. Love Seeker Radio, finding love for your authentic self with renowned love coach Heather Lynn. Tired of dissatisfying relationships? Kiss them goodbye and power up your love seeker energy. Coach Heather Lynn reminds you that you can just be you, the beautiful and perfect you. Visit heatherlynncoaching.com to learn more. The doctor is in. Tune in to the hit show, The Psychic Love Doctor, with host Deborah Lee. Deborah's life affirming, highly perceptive reading method has taught Deborah how to zero in on specific problems with relationships, career pursuits, and current roadblocks to success and happiness. Join Deborah Fridays at 2 p.m. Pacific and for a special broadcast the second Thursday of every month at 11 a.m. Pacific on TransformationTalkRadio.com. Naturopathic doctor, founder of the Martha's Vineyard Holistic Retreat, and author of the New York Times bestseller, 21 Pounds in 21 Days, Dr. Ronnie DeLuce has helped tens of thousands of people, including celebrities and athletes, with her message of lifestyle change. Now, Dr. Ronnie DeLuce wants to help you. You, too, can be saved. Email Dr. Ronnie DeLuce at info at ronniedeluceonradio.com and visit mvholisticretreat.com. Dr. Ronnie DeLuce, your partner in wellness.
Hey, everybody, welcome back. Welcome back. You know, uh, first of all, for those of you out there, if you go to Mary's website, uh, Mary Shutan, and it's Mary, S-H-U-T-A-N, dot com, you're going to be able to go and take a look at um, not just uh, what Mary is doing, uh, you know, some of the online classes that are there, and also you can subscribe and receive a spiritual and psych- psychic awakening quiz. Uh, your guide to understanding what spiritual awakening and psychic abilities you're experiencing. Psychic abilities is what we're talking about here today as well. For those of you that are tuning in that want to call in to connect with Mary directly during the show, 1-800-930-2819. And, you know, for those of you out there, I mean, I'm referring to, you know, this beautiful, this amazing guide that Mary has put together, you know, and it's a guide to spiritual awakening. uh, But, you know, most of us don't understand that, you know, we have a pathway and sometimes this could be a pathway in the awakening process, which is gradual. You know, it may not be I climbed the mountain and the lightning bolt hit me. It could be something as as simple as I literally thought I was Elvis Presley. I don't know how I thought that. Um, he was not alive anymore, but that may be an interesting point to talk about. But as we look at these layers, Mary, thank you for joining me here on the show. And I, I would love for you to take us on a journey of the layers, but I also would like you to talk about, you know, some of the challenges, some of the obstacles that might happen along the way to realizing our awakening. Not that you've had any of that happen for sure. Of course not. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, like you did mention, um, there are a variety of kind of layers um, that I will talk about. And basically, the concept of my book and my understanding, as well as the understanding of a whole bunch of other people, is that all of us are are awake. All of us are completely aware. We completely know who we are. The difficulty is, is that we have all of these layers surrounding us on top of that state. So it's not like, you know, there are these select people in our culture who are awake. Um, It's just that some people have kind of removed all these layers on top. In the book, I kind of um, talk about it a bit as those those nesting dolls. And so um, when we're talking about the layers, I go in a discussion of what I call the 12 layers, even though there are a few more. And I'm sorry there aren't 11, <laughs> um, but um, it really starts at kind of that outer nesting doll, um, and it's a process of removing all of these layers. So the first layer um, is really our self, our concept of who we are, what we consider to be concrete reality, basically our day-to-day lives. Um, and so what these layers are constructed of is all of the traumas and belief systems and, you know, kind of realizations that we've had through that layer. So um, so in the self layer, it's stuff like, what was your early childhood like? Um, and do you have a bunch of emotional baggage that is kind of coloring what you see of the world? Um, and so when we start to awaken, we start to w- work our way through kind of those those past traumas, those past belief systems, all of our kind of baggage and stuff of that layer. Um, and for most people, it really is a focus on that layer of the self, meaning that we're going to work through our own stuff first. Um, and when we start to work through our own stuff, glimpses of the other layers will start to come through. So we might start to have realizations of past lives um, or how our family system, our immediate family or the house that we grew up in, how those inform us. We might also have uh, ancestral uh, um, layer come up meaning that what were our ancestors like? Did they have a lot of trauma? Did they have a lot of emotions that they passed down to us? And so those are kind of the beginning layers. But as we, uh, the awakening process is really working our way 
through these layers, understanding what's going on, and then taking personal responsibility for, for clearing all of that trauma, all of those belief systems. So the awakening process itself, I realized that that whole thing sounded a bit complex, but it's really a freeing process, meaning that we're letting go of all of this stuff that surrounds us, that has informed us, all of the traumas that we or other people have experienced that have been passed down to us, um, all of the stuff that isn't ours Mm -hmm. or is ours in the first layer, letting all that stuff go so we can fully and kind of vitally realize who we are. Mm. Um, you know, I wanted to ask you this, these layers that happen, I, I heard you say two different things, and maybe we can talk about that for a minute. You know, one is perhaps the possibility that we live in the world we live in, and because we live in the world we live in, we pick up layers as we're here. Um, and so, you, you know, for me, when I hear that, you know, we we have those layers here, but then I also heard you say, well, wait a minute, we may come into this world with layers from past lives. Um, and you know, how do we even discover any of this? Generally, a lot of the focus in this field has been on kind of that discovery and acquisition process of, you know, let's go out and figure what our, let's go and do all of this stuff. When you're going through the awakening process, this stuff will gradually begin to emerge. And what happens, and I can talk about this specifically, but For example, with ancestral patterns, when they start to emerge, they can tend to be really intense emotions that come out of nowhere, meaning that we've maybe worked through some of our stuff and we have this intense rage that comes up and we don't really have any reason to be angry, any reason to feel a huge amount of rage. Or maybe some past life stuff comes up, all of a sudden we start to question, why are we afraid of the water? you know, or something like that. So instead of kind of these doing states, I really suggest that um, people do things like um, more of being states, meaning um, doing something like exercise or um, meditation is really important. I think it's really essential for pretty much anyone that might be, you know, my sort of bias. But um, all of these things will naturally come up when the person is ready for them. And when they do, having somebody to guide them through the process or my book or working with a healer that can work with you on, you know, ancestral patterns or past life issues or or whatever's going on um, can really help to heal those layers and and to help you work through some probably pretty intense stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, I, I want to ask you, what were some of the most intense moments you had in your journey? In terms of my journey, I had um, what is known as a classic Kundalini awakening, um, which is a pretty intense awakening um, where you experience a lot of energy, specifically a lot of heat. Um, But the difficulty is is that you also experience a lot of spontaneous body movements, meaning your body going into um, yoga poses automatically or your um, body locking into odd positions um and so when i was experiencing this i was going through graduate school at the time and so Mm -hmm. there was a lot of fear there about um i was acupuncture school as well so there was a lot of fear there about people seeing um my body kind of go into body locks or you know Mm -hmm. um kind of figuring out what was going on with me at the time Um, And kind of beyond that, um, probably the most intense layer, if we're talking about layers, there were were two. One was um, the ancestral layer, which tends to be a huge layer for so many people because they'll suddenly realize, oh, I have all this intense grief, I have intense despair, I have all this intense emotion. You know what? I realize it's not mine. Um, and figuring out how to deal with that and work with that in a way that could bring kind of honor to my ancestors um, as well as peace and healing and all of that sort of stuff was really important to me. And um, there was also, when we go past kind of personal layers, there are also, you kind of alluded to this, collective layers. So societal expectations, you know, Um, world energies, cosmic energies, 
archetypes, mythic influences, you know, kind of the stories that were passed down, you know, through our culture, through our religion, all of those sorts of stuff are, are additional layers that are outside of our own stuff, but they're, they're layers that we must work through. And so it's not unusual for people, and this was the case um, of myself as well, is that I woke up to the point where I saw everyone around me was asleep, basically. Mm. Mm. And this um, brought out a lot of anger in me. Was everybody else seemed like they were kind of sleepwalking or puppets of their own lives. And I yeah. worked through that okay. And then I came to the realization that a lot of people kind of prefer that illusion. They prefer that sleep, even if they're, you know, talking about different things. Um, and that was a difficult layer for me to work through. Not only the realization that, you know, a, a vast majority of people are are kind of asleep, for lack of a better term, right. um, but that they prefer to remain that way, and they'll actively do things in their lives when they start to awaken to put themselves back to sleep. So, well, isn't this isn't this perfect though? I mean, you know, when the movie The Matrix came out. You know, there yeah. were many, many different conversations about whether or not the Matrix and the Matrix trilogy was actually a metaphor for spiritual awakening. I mean, there are more conversations, I think, about uh, that movie in our pop culture pretty much than just about any movie we've ever had. But it really did touch upon how we would actually choose the idea mm-hmm. of not knowing, how we would choose the comfort and the security that we would feel of not knowing rather than awakening. And perhaps some people say awakening to the truth. We're going to take a short break. When we come back, we're going to talk about that and much more. Stay tuned. We'll be right back. The new era of financial planning is upon us, where it is just as important to focus on your inner wealth game as it is your outer wealth game. Wouldn't you like to be in the forefront of this new groundbreaking financial movement? Lynn Brown, award-winning financial planner, energy coach, and international radio host, will share real, actionable money wisdom infused with empowering tips, fear-busting exercises, and money-growing magnetism. Aren't you ready to create your fully financially healthy life? Join Lynn for this free two-hour full-spectrum financial planning workshop in Bellevue, Washington on October 8th or October 13th from 6 to 8 p.m. Space is limited and will fill up fast, so call Lynn today at 425-372-4749. That's 425-372-4749. Light food and beverages will be included. See you there. Tune in to Prescience Life Radio with host Mia Simone. Mia is devoted to sharing her extensive knowledge on the invisible worlds of energy. Join Mia and discover the science of intuition and connect with your greatest gift. Start living in your potential today and every day by opening up to the power of inner knowledge. To learn more about Mia, visit presciencelife.com. Do you want the freedom to spend more time with your loved ones? Travel the world? Live spontaneously? Get ready, because the Chip Justice Show is here. Hosts Dr. Pat Basile and Chip Justice can help you build meaningful success while embracing life. Living a life you love is the end game in this new, inspirational, and empowering show. Positive changes for a life you'll love. Tune in every month on TransformationTalkRadio.com and visit PositiveChangeInstitute.co for more information. Tune in to the Angels and Answers Psychic Radio Show with Claire Florence, Artie Hoffman, and Sky Siegel every Thursday for a two-hour show, 2 p.m. Pacific, 5 p.m. Eastern Time on Transformation Talk Radio. Artie and Sky deliver spiritual and motivational messages with passion and a sense of humor. Call in 800-930-2819 for live and on-air readings. Visit ArtieHoffman.com and SkyOfAngels.com. 
My dream is to end homelessness. My passion is living a green life. My dream is to end poverty. My passion is volunteering. My passion is making a difference. My dream is to cure Lyme disease. My passion is rebuilding communities. My passion is helping those in need. My passion is caring for the elderly. My dream is to find a cure for cancer. My dream is to leave a better world for my children. We all have that special passion, that lifelong dream that drives us to live our lives with meaning and to create a better world. No matter what drives you, we can all make an impact. Dr. Pat Basili is helping others make their dreams come true so we can all help make our world a better world. To learn more about how Dr. Pat is building a community of sharing hope, strength, funds, knowledge, and information, visit abetterworldcrowdfunding.com today. That's abetterworldcrowdfunding.com. Hey, everybody, welcome back. For more information about us, you can always go to the drpatshow.com or you can go to Transformation Talk Radio. If you want to take a sneak peek at what we're creating, go ahead and go to transformationradio.fm and you'll be able to take a look at, uh, you know, the, the channels, the network, and everything else. We're launching um, the first of the year. So thank you all for all of the above. Um, and today, it is so great to be talking with Mary about, you know, spiritual awakening and what, you know, what the guide is about. Uh, you know, Mary, when you sat down and you, you decided to write this guide, you know, there have to be a million things going through your mind about it, or maybe not. But before the break, we were talking about, you know, what it's like for us in the world to either take the red pill or the blue pill. You know, are we willing, you know, to step out into the world and what what are we really saying yes to? See, I mean, it's kind of like the movie The Matrix in the way that, you know, wasn't a whole lot of information about what was going to happen if he took that pill that was going to show him the truth. But he knew what he had wasn't working. I mean, I wonder, is that now, it, does that become a motivation for us? in the world, this idea of what we have now not working and knowing that there is something else we have to step out to into the world. And I think you refer to that as an alteration of belief systems in your book. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So in a lot of the more gradual awakenings, if we are going to go back to that kind of matrix analogy, is that it really is our choice if we want to kind of um, work our way through things if we want to awaken further, if we want to listen to that little voice inside that's telling us things like, oh, your your relationship may not be right. Oh, you really should, you know, you shouldn't be living here or, you know, maybe you should do this and this with your life um, versus kind of putting our, taking the other pill and putting ourselves back to sleep. And we can do this in so many different ways, you know. Drugs, alcohol, shopping, gossip, TV, kind of whatever you you have, you you know, you can put yourself back to sleep and not listen to that inner voice that's telling you that something isn't quite right. But um, really the whole, I think, spiritual purpose, and this is going to be a rather large, grandiose statement, is this realization of wanting something wanting to fully be who we are, to fully understand who we are, but also to connect to that thing that is larger than us, to no longer feel isolated and alone, to feel part of things, to kind of feel that spiritual flow go through us and um, permeate our lives. And that's really kind of what it's like to be in a more awakened state. But the difficulty is, as we were talking about, all those layers of beliefs and traumas that we've kind of either inherited or developed over the course of our lives um, are blocking us from, from feeling that state. And there's a part of us that realizes that and we miss it, so we continually kind of go out looking for it. Mm. We live in a world right now, and this is really kind of talking to what you're saying is, you know, uh, I I think every time you turn around, we can get some additional data on the rise of depression, 
the rise in mental illness, the rise in things called ADD, ADHD, you know, the over and over and over and over again, the rise in autism, you know, and, and yet some people would step back and say, well, you know, I'm not sure what it's related to, but are these really, quote, mental illnesses? Are these really, you know, called special needs? Or some people might say, are these people that are on a faster track for spiritual awakening? And I would love to hear you talk about that. I know you mentioned it in the book. Yeah, so in the book I do talk um, a bit at the end about kind of mental illness versus spiritual awakening. At the time that I was writing the book, there was a story that came came forward about um, this man who had taken his son to a prominent shaman who, um, and his son was having a lot of difficulty with schizophrenia, um, and the shaman treated it as um, a shamanic initi- initiation, um, and there was some success with that. But um, I do caution people for saying there's been this whole movement about, oh, any sort of mental illness or ADD or somebody acting you know, outside of what we would call kind of the normal bell curve of acceptable behavior yeah. um, is a shaman or is going through a spiritual awakening. And unfortunately, things aren't that simplistic. Mm-hmm. What I would say is that, um, you know, there are people um, definitely out there that if we talk about kind of um, consciousness or awareness or just even acceptable human behavior is sort of a bell curve, you know, and everybody on that curve being okay, but everybody on the outskirts of, you know, either of that side of that curve, um, who doesn't think like everybody else, who doesn't see, feel, sense, or act like everybody else being kind of diagnosable, I think that that's really kind of appalling, because um, luckily when I was growing up, my strangeness was just kind of described as, oh, she's, she's an artist. You know, yes. that's, that's why she's, that's right, why she's right. so strange. Look at her. Look at that painting. You know, but now, um, surely I would have likely been diagnosed on the autism spectrum, um, as well as, you know, I have a lot of friends now who are, you know, later in life being diagnosed on the autism spectrum. Um, and a lot of times it's just because of the ability to see or sense things differently. And there certainly are many, many different things going on, but um, we are expected, due to that kind of societal layer, if we're going back to that, to have a certain type of life, a certain type of existence, job, family, career, all of this sort of stuff. And we, if we don't meet that societal expectation, there must be something wrong with us. Yeah. And, you know, this is really the interesting um, uh, time we live in where uh, we have to make some decision because of something, right, that says we're, well, this group is either right and this group is either wrong, and off we go into the wild blue yonder. Um, and so, you know, are there shades uh, of, of, sh- of shades of awakening, just like in the layers you've talked about, that we're just not ready to, you know, recognize in the world? You know, it's kind of like if it's not black, then it's got to be white. But how about the gray areas? Yeah, exactly. And so we do have a really linear mind, typically, most of us. And most of us have this really black or white thinking. So if we think about something critically or if we think about, you know, something in that sort of gray segment that automatically means to everybody that's either black or white that you're you're on, you're in the other camp you're on the other side you're you know if you're not completely for us you're against us sort of thinking and that sort of um black or white thinking is actually one of those things that really begins to disappear in the awakening process to begin to Um, be comfortable with all those different shades of gray. And one of the most interesting things that happens during the awakening process is that you really begin to understand kind of both sides of an argument and realize that both sides are really true kind of in their, in their own way. Mm. Uh, You know, I wanted to ask you about um, this idea of, I think you refer to it as spiritual crisis a spiritual mm-hmm. crisis and i you know and i think for many people that may hear that like spiritual crisis or an idea of something happening 
in our lives that we know little about. Um, you know, where do we go with it? And, you know, what do we do with it? And how does it all affect or doesn't affect things in our lives? And I, I, I talk about that because we're hearing about this more and more and more, Mary. I mean, it's not like, you know, it's not like now we're not connected. We're connected all over the world through the cell phone right now. You know what I mean? 94% of all moms have a smartphone. And that is that is interesting, right? They shop on it. They buy on it. They get Discover information card, how can on I help it. you? Oh, and you're... what folks are knowing is that we're having more and more common, uh, conversations about spirituality. Have we arrived? Where are we with the spirituality conversation from where you sit? Um, you did mention a couple of different things that, that I will talk about. In terms of spirituality as a whole, it is unfortunately part of the illusion and kind of part of the, the I'll call it the propaganda machine. But every five, if you read as many self-help books as I have and as many kind of new age books as I have, every five years or so they'll announce kind of the, the, the next wave that's going to cause all of us to, to awaken. Um, and this has been happening since, you know, for a very long time. You know, you can read self-help books from the 70s or, you know, 60s or 40s, and they're all, like, by the 50s, we'll all be awakened and enlightened. And unfortunately, I would love to, to believe that, but things aren't necessarily that simple. I do think that people are more willing to look at the spiritual nature of things, but there is a huge resistant part of each of us typically that is continuing to grasp for um, the kind of biggest sleeping agents that we can find, whether it be alcohol or drugs um, or, you know, watching the Kardashians on TV or, well, how about or food? something like how that. About food? Yeah, food, how about definitely. Food? Right. Yeah. Right. Um, and so um, I do believe that more people are interested in spirituality, but a lot of the spirituality that um, there are excellent spiritual teachers out there of all sorts, but um, a lot of the, and this is going to be a controversial statement, a lot of the, the ones that are the most popular are the ones that are providing kind of those comforting illusions rather than um, allowing people to have kind of a direct experience of their own spirituality, um, which I really consider to to have the, the spiritual awakening process be is this there are themes and there are common patterns and there's all this sort of stuff, types of awakenings and all that stuff I talk about in my book, but it's really a path of direct revelation, meaning it's your path, meaning that, you know, um, you don't need to quote teachers and gurus and, you know, all that sort of stuff. You just need some skills to, to navigate it. So, um, but I, I do see still a lot of kind of illusion and a lot of that sort of comforting illusion specifically kind of in the new age community that that unfortunately does come up um and the other thing that you were talking about was kind of that that spiritual crisis um spot and um i will talk a bit about that in terms of if we were to return to the matrix analogy some people don't really get a choice they get that pill shoved down their throat and all of a sudden they're awakening um and they don't have a choice about it, so that brings up a lot of fear. They might not know what's happening initially. They just have all of these huge amounts of symptoms, and they go to doctors, and, you know, maybe they'll get diagnosed with something. Maybe they won't. Um, maybe they'll get medicated or something like that. But the what happens in spiritual crisis or spiritual emergency is that so much stuff so many of those layers are coming off, coming up at the same time, that it's impossible for the person to integrate. Um, it can happen where you have a spiritual awakening process that's so fast that you're at your desk one day doing okay, and all of a sudden you feel a huge surge of energy through you, and you look around you and you realize that this is exactly the wrong job for you. You don't want to be married to your husband anymore. You don't, you know, you don't want to live in the state you're in. You know, you want to change your name and move to Peru and, you know, kind of all this sort of stuff can come up. Um, And I'm making kind of a little bit light of it, but the spiritual awakening process isn't a, just a spiritual process. It causes real physical, emotional, energetic, the whole 
spectrum of experiences. We live in a physical world. We have physical bodies. That's how we are intended to kind of have our spiritual nature. So we have to process everything through our physical bodies, which causes a lot of issues for people who are going through this process in an intense way, removing a lot of those layers rather quickly. Well, you know, and part of this, too, is <clears throat> if we look at our lives, we are faced with obstacles. And, you know, some people think the obstacles are spiritual growth. What do you think? I think that the obstacle for most people that I talk to is um, the fear of the unknown mm. as well as control issues. So if we have something that isn't easily defined, that we can't go to a doctor to and have the doctor go, oh, you're having a kundalini awakening, um, we get into this huge fear mode. I talk to a lot of people and I work with a lot of people who are going through more gradual as well as some of the more intense spiritual awakenings like kundalini awakenings or they feel called to be a spiritual healer of some sort or they're going through an intense psychic awakening where their psychic faculties open really quickly. Um, And a lot of these people have a huge amount of fear, which is understandable because they're having a lot of symptoms that they don't necessarily know how to navigate, and they basically don't understand what's going on with them. And with so much of the, the real reason that I wrote this book is because when I was going through my process, 99% of the material out there, and yes, I'm making up that number, but it seems like that much of the material out there is what I call aspirational. And by that, I mean that um, if you want to find a book, How to Open Your Third Eye, if you want to find a book on how to awaken your kundalini, become a psychic, or, you know, have a spiritual awakening, there's so much material out there. But there is really nothing out there for people who are already going through the process, who are having difficulties with the process. And there's a lack of material out there for people who um, don't want to pathologize the process meaning that if we go to, even now, if you go to kind of therapists and stuff like that, most of them are going to say, um, oh, this was a result of too much meditation or you did something, this is a crisis caused by something internal um, within you. And um, they give them all sorts of, you know, names like Qigong psychosis or meditation crisis and all of this sort of stuff. But I really wanted to approach it as something that is natural and it's really leading for you to become a healthier um, person who vitally knows who you are. Yeah. And, you know, this is really what you are and have said yes to in the world is helping people. What would you say is the greatest distraction we have in our pop culture today? You know, if this is a process and we are, you know, and we are in the process of awakening every day, uh, then what what do you think is what is perhaps some of our greatest distractions we have besides drugs, alcohol and food? Right. Because we know we're numbing ourselves. All we need to do is look at some of the statistics. Right. Uh, but outside of that, you know, what would you say is an emotional distraction that we have? You know, the biggest distractions that I think that we really have beyond kind of those outer numbing agents are really a tendency to look outside of ourselves for for comfort and support. And I'm not saying that that isn't wonderful. Obviously, I work with people. I work as, you know, a teacher and help people through processes like this. But um, a lot of people are really looking outer and reading all these books and taking all of these classes and, you know, following gurus and quoting them and doing all this stuff that's really outside of themselves and taking on those understandings as their own. And so I really think that that's a huge difficulty in this culture because, one, because that guru might not know what they're talking about, but, mm-hmm. two, um, is that the the awakening process is really a process of self-reflection. It's, like I said, a process of direct revelation, and it's an internal process. So learning how to use tools and learning how to, you know, go away from that really outer approach to a more inner approach is um, one of the best things that that people can do. Um, And beyond that, 
we have a really tendency, you know, ego is turned into this huge <laughs> word in our pop culture. But yeah. in terms of looking for, for teachers, I always tell people that if you run across a teacher who says that they know everything, that they know the totality of the cosmos, run screaming in the other direction, <laughs> you know. Um, so we tend to get to these states where we're like, oh, we've had a kundalini awakening, or oh, I'm awake, or something yeah. like, oh, I'm a teacher, um, I've had X, Y, and Z happen, and we got so wrapped around our story and so wrapped around that state that we stop our progression, meaning that if we know absolutely everything in the cosmos, there's no need for us to continue to unfold, continue to learn more, continue to humble ourselves. Um, so that, you know, I always use ego is kind of one of those things that that is so talked about and talked about negatively and there are many yeah. positive attributes of the ego but it and in some states people will kind of you know applaud each other for how awake they are um and they might have just taken you know three steps on the spiritual journey from where they were and they could have taken you know 20 by now or they could be so much more of who they actually are than somebody who is just stating that they're x y and z yeah exactly and you know it's all different for all of us so you know i i i am i must say that i'm not one of the people that ran out and bought the everything book um but i do know millions have done that um and you know i wake up some days mariana and i think to myself you know today i don't even know what i don't know and that is a feeling i have and i used to be in despair about it right I used to be in despair about not having all the answers uh, because, you know, in the culture where human doing is really in the forefront and not human being that, you know, gets rewarded, it, it's very difficult when we believe that we have to have all the answers and we don't know. And so here's my, here's the question. And thank you so much for today. Please again, give your website. Uh, uh, to folks tuning in and I would love for you to uh, leave with us your personal message thank you so much for all that you've done oh thank you for having me on and my website is maryshutan.com and that's mary m-a-r-y s-h-u t-a-n dot com um, and in terms of personal message, um, a lot of the things that I have talked about are pretty much my personal message. But um, what I would say is that the spiritual awakening process overall is something that you can learn tools to navigate. Um, but the spiritual process isn't something that should take you out of your body or out of your lives. Mm-hmm. It is a, it's a pretty direct revelatory path. It's meant to be integrated into your lives, into your bodies, um, you know, kind of into yourselves in a really wonderful way. I would say in terms of my book, um, The Spiritual Awakening Guide, that it's really a a non-dogmatic approach, um, talking about everything from the spiritual journey to the many different types of spiritual awakenings that we can have, some of which we touched on as well as some of the common experiences, physical, emotional, energetic, that we can have. And this isn't about kind of my memoir or my personal journey. It's a result of me working with um, hundreds of people over the last few years. And it's really about you um, who is listening, learning and really understanding what the spiritual awakening process is in a really pragmatic, logical way as well as looking at areas that really resonate with you and learning simple tools to navigate through these experiences. So um, my approach is I always kind of talk about how it's really non-BS. I have no interest in kind of being a guru or being seen as anything like that. I'm simply a guide who helps people navigate kind of their own internal resources, their own skills. So they can be who they're intended to be in the world, not who I'd like them to be. Wow. Thank you so much for all that you do. And thank you for taking this time to chat with all of us today. Thank you for so much for having me. Well, I want to thank everybody for tuning us in and turning us on. And remember, more coming up on Transformation Talk Radio. Go ahead and visit TransformationTalkRadio.com and take a listen. We'll see you next time.
I tried to swim again. 